Hello, and welcome to the first in a series of videos that I'm calling uh, Poetry Should Not Suck with Josh Dobbin. Um, the reason why I'm calling that is because poetry should not suck. And yet, and yet, uh, when we learn about it in school, it often does uh, because of the manner in which we, we learn about it. And uh, what they do is they hand us like the literary equivalent of a uh, formaldehyde-soaked frog uh, where we're given this dead thing and we're told, cut it up into its component pieces, piece it out uh, and see how it all connects. And then here's the structure and here's uh, the underlying principle, but, but you never get to see, you never get to see the thing in motion. You know, you never get to see the frog hop. Um, and poetry, I think, is um, more beautiful than a frog. Um, and should be appreciated while it's alive, um, as a living thing. And that's the whole, that's the whole thing, is that, uh, poems and poetry are a language that are just specifically constructed to capture an emotion, send it across time, um, space, where you can pick it up and experience it as, as it is meant to, uh, meant to be, right? It's, it's, uh, captured, sort of like freeze-dried almost, um, and then reconstituted in the speaking and the feeling and, and the um, experiencing, really. So the first one that I'm going to share with you here uh, that will, I'm sure, be like, you know, of interest to literally twos and twos of you out there. Um, but it, it's, uh, it's, by a po it's by a poet named, um, named Robert Herrick, and he wrote in the 1600s, um, which would, I would tend to think, make you go, oh, no, this isn't going to appeal to me. Well, what does a 1600s guy have to say to me here in the modern era that's going to, you know, what do we have in common? Well, you're both horny. And and that's that's the point of this poem is that, uh, you know, even in the 1600s, it, it's relatable. Um, it, it's called Corinna's Going Amaying. And uh, it takes place on the um, in the early morning of May 1st, which is May Day, but um, the early morning becomes the later morning. And uh, May Day is the, the holiday where you hook up with your girlfriend. Um, it's, it's a fertility holiday. Uh, it's where you're allowed to be um, lusty, really. Uh, you know, and, um, and, and, and you're meant to go forth and, and you know, do the act uh, or, 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 or at least pitch woo uh, <laughs> to the point where, where procreation is going to happen at some point. So he's like, Corinna, wake up, we gotta go, it's, it's happening, it's May Day, this is, this is the time, and she's like, I'm tired, I'm tired, and, and that's, that's the poem, and, um, but it, it's spoken in the 1600s, or it was written in the 1600s, um, with language, and when, with, with a structure, and, and with, you know, allusions, uh, you know, to old, uh, sort of classic gods, uh, when he refers to the sun, uh, you know, about, here's the thing, um, it may seem a little off-putting at first, but, 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 um, uh, if you say it the right way, I believe that what can happen is sort of magic. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's magic words that, um, convey an emotion that was felt forever ago, um, that you get to hear and feel now today. Um, and isn't that something, uh, Corinna's Going Amaying. Corinna's Going Amaying by Robert Herrick. Get up! Get up for shame! The blooming morn upon her wings presents the god unshorn. See how Aurora throws her fair, fresh quilted colors through the air. Get up, sweet slug a bed, and see the dew bespangling herb and tree. Each flower has wept and bowed toward the east above an hour since. Yet you, not dressed, nay, not so much as out of bed, when all the birds have matin said and sung their thankful hymns, tis sin, nay, profanation to keep in, when as a thousand virgins on this day spring sooner than the lark to fetch in May, rise and put on your foliage and be seen to come forth like the springtime, fresh and green and sweet as flora take no care for jewels for your gown or hair fear not the leaves will strew gems in abundance upon you besides the childhood of the day has kept against you come 
Some Orient pearls unwept come and receive them while the light hangs on the dewlocks of the night and Titan on the eastern hill retires himself or else stands still till you come forth. Mm -hmm. Wash, dress, be brief in praying. Few beads are best once we go a maying. Come, my Corinna, come and coming, Mark, how each field turns a street, each street a park made green and trimmed with trees. See how devotion gives each house a bow or branch, each porch, each door, ere this an ark. A tabernacle is made up of white thorn, neatly interwove as if here were those cooler shades of love. Can such delights be in the street and open fields and we not see it come? will abroad, and let's obey the proclamation made for May, and sin no more, as we have done by staying, but my Corinna, come, let's go a maying. There's not a budding boy or girl this day, but is got up and gone to go bring in May. A deal of youth ere this is come back and with white thorn laden home. Some have dispatched their cakes and cream before that we have left to dream. And some have wept and wooed and plighted troth and chose their priest ere we can cast off sloth. Many a green gown has been given, many a kiss both odd and even, uh, many a glance too has been sent from out the eye, love's firmament. Many a jest told of the keys betraying this night and locks picked. Yet we are not a maying. Come, let us go while we are in our prime and take the harmless folly of the time. We shall grow old apace and die before we know our liberty. Our life is short, and our days run as fast away as does the sun, and as a vapor or a drop of rain once lost can ne'er be found again. So when you or I are made a fable, a song, or fleeting shade, all love, all liking, all delight, lies drowned with us in endless night. Then, while time serves, and we are but decaying, come, my Corinna, come, let's go a-maying.